Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys about why you don't necessarily need to specialize in a body part just because you want it to grow. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skill up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. And you know, the, the funny thing is, I'm going to approach this from, again, a general fitness perspective. I'm not a competitive bodybuilder. I'm not interested in competitive bodybuilding. I don't give advice on competitive bodybuilding. So let's get that out of the way. That is not my area. But everyone out there who is training, you have muscles that you want to grow. Most of you, the overwhelming majority of you are trying to improve your body composition in some way. and You have muscles that you want to grow. And before people say, Jason, saying don't do curls. Uh, I do curls at the end of every workout right now, don't I? Don't I? So am I telling you not to do curls? No, it's not what I'm telling you at all. But what people need to understand when they start thinking in terms of, you know, people ask me, hey, I want this muscle to grow. I see it in comments. I want my traps to grow. I want my biceps to grow. And I'm just kind of like, are you telling me that's the only thing you want to grow? Because when you start looking at it in those terms, I really want this muscle to grow a lot more. To, to anyone who's looking at that and you're thinking that means you're trying to specialize in it and put extra emphasis on it, <clears throat> that doesn't mean that you need to make overall gains and that's the vast majority of you guys asking you re really actually want to get bigger right if your goal is to get bigger you shouldn't ever be thinking in terms of man I really need this muscle to grow because that's not how you get bigger when you start thinking in terms of I really want my traps to grow I really need my, my side delts to grow I really need my bicep to grow I need my hamstrings to grow whatever muscle you're, you're talking about that means that you're now happy with everything else right and that's the reality the majority of people asking that are not happy with everything else they just happen to want that muscle to grow and it's like but you you do know if you put on 10 pounds of muscle that muscle's gonna grow right you are aware of that and in fact it will probably grow better if you go ahead and just focus on getting big and strong. In other words, it's a hell of a lot easier to add two inches to your arm measurements or two inches to your, your total chest measurement, whether it's counting your chest and back and everything else, if you're actually actively trying to make your whole body grow. Meaning it's going to be less effort involved technically, less time involved probably too. Because when you start talking about specializing, that means that you're talking about letting everything else lag so that this muscle can become disproportionate because you either think it's not proportionate now or you want some weird freakish proportion. Uh, it, it, it's what people need to understand. And I'm not saying you can't put some extra emphasis there, but think about it in this perspective. If you need your chest to grow and you can increase your strength on your bench press or your weighted dips by another 30%, don't you think that's going to make your chest grow? If you need your triceps to grow, you want your triceps to grow, you decided you need them bigger. You don't think that if you can add another 50 pounds to your weighted dip or another 50 pounds to the work sets on your bench press that your triceps aren't also going to grow? Same thing, your pull-ups, chin-ups, rows, you don't think that stuff affects both the biceps and the lats and the rear delts and everything else? Right? That's the perspective I'm trying to give people here. You may not need to specialize. Same thing, people come to this, the whole trapezius thing. They're worried about their traps. You do know that most of the big exercises will build traps. And they ask you silly questions. Well, if I just deadlift like, no, I never said that. You need to do multiple big exercises. A trapezius actually has at least three different areas. Uh, and they're stimulated slightly differently, or actually quite a bit differently, depending upon the exercise you do. But what I'll tell you is, and unless again, there's genetics involved. Uh, if you're a drug-free lifter, uh, as far as drug-free standards go, as long as you don't have a genetic situation with your traps, uh, you just suck in the traps genetically. If you get really strong at deadlifts, rows, and the press, and by the press I mean the standing overhead press, your, your traps are going to get a hell of a lot of development. They're going to get a hell of a lot of development. And the first thing I would ask a guy before they start saying, well, I really need my traps, I would start asking them, well, you know, how much do you press? What do your work sets look like on the standing press? How much weight are you rowing from a dead stop off the floor? 
what do your work sets look like on your on your barbell rows? What do your work sets look like on your deadlifts? That's the first questions I would ask because you may not need to specialize. You probably have at least one or two of those big lifts that you need to put another 50 or 100 pounds on your work sets. That's probably what's holding you back. I mean, you honestly think you can strict press over 200 pounds or do rows with 275 strict rows off the floor and not have good sized traps? Especially if you combine deadlift with that, because I think the deadlift out of those three, I think the deadlift contributes the least to the traps. Just my opinion. I'm not saying it doesn't, but truth be told, I think those other two contribute slightly more. I think they contribute more to trapezius development than deadlifts do. And they, a hell of a lot more than these silly ass rack pulls. Now, you know, heavy shrugs can go a long way, but the question you got to ask is do you need that? And for a lot of that, maybe you just need general specialized shoulder work, because it all goes hand in hand. It all goes hand in hand. Any guys usually out there who feel like their traps are too small, their entire shoulder structure is too small. They need to be doing more standing presses. Maybe, maybe they need to start doing snatches or snatch grip high pulls. Right? They need to be building their whole shoulder structure if that's what they're concerned with, not just their traps. Come on. But you guys see the point that I'm getting at there. For a lot of you, you actually don't want what you say that you want. You think that you want this one muscle to grow bigger when in actuality, you actually mean that you want everything bigger. You just happen to want that one to be part of it. Well, if you make everything grow, it's going to grow. If you put 10 pounds of muscle on and you're on a balanced training program, your biceps are going to grow. Your traps are going to grow. Your pecs are going to grow. Your quads are going to grow. Everything is going to grow if you're on a reasonably balanced training program that stimulates your entire body and you gain 10 pounds of muscle. Everything will grow. That doesn't require specialization. Specialization means you need, you've need you got a proportion issue. All right, now, people say, well, what about you? You're doing curls? Yeah, because number one, biceps are my worst muscle group. And not because they haven't been trained, not because my biceps aren't strong, it's that proportionately I have long arms and I have a thick rib cage. I have a really big rib cage. So because of that, it's easier for my chest and lats and everything to develop. My back develops insanely easy, insanely easy. But I do tons and tons of deadlifting and rowing and pulling, and uh, that's given me a big back combined with my frame. I have long arms, though. It will always make my biceps look smaller than they measure. Like, at any given time, my biceps probably measure an inch bigger than you think they are uh, because of my proportions. Another reason I would make a great bodybuilder. Not my cup of tea, but I wouldn't. One of the reasons. Um, so there's that to factor in. They're my worst muscle group. And what do I do for a living? I'm a fitness YouTuber. If I want to make more money on fitness YouTube, I'm going to have to actually look the part more. I probably I could probably make another hundred or two hundred thousand dollars a year by looking more the part. Let's be honest here. So that's why I'm cutting. That's why I'm doing a little more arm work. Because YouTube fitness seems to desire disproportionate bicep development. Look at a lot of your best fitness YouTubers who, are, who have the highest outreaches. Most of them have biceps that are not proportionate to the rest of their body. I can think of at least five of them off the top of my head who their biceps are disproportionately large to the rest of the muscles in their upper body. They don't even have a chest sometimes, but they got guns, right? I, I've got a chest. I've got a back. I've got all that stuff. Um, so in my case, yeah, I'm doing extra curls at the end, but are the curls a primary grower of my biceps? No, my pull-ups and my rows and all that are. The curls are there to, to add a little bit because at this point in the game, I need some disproportionate development because of what I technically do for a living. It would be, it would be beneficial to me to add another inch of bicep, not an inch of arm, but an actual inch of bicep over time, over the next year or two, would actually probably be worthwhile for me for more money. It would probably generate me more income in the long term. That's just the truth. So therefore, I am doing them as a finishing move at the end just to make sure that they get a little more stimulation. I'm still not specializing in them. I'm going to do all my other big lifts first. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.